Hey everybody, I am here to show you a few sample self-portraits to hopefully get you inspired. I, um, let's just, let's get going on this. I'm going somewhat in order, so we'll start of course with Rembrandt. Rembrandt, most of the artists I'm bringing you today are artists that make a practice of doing self-portraits throughout their career. So it's really interesting if you like any of these in particular or attracted to them, then search them on uh, the web. Go look for them, Google their name, and find their other self-portraits they've done because Rembrandt certainly has done a lot of them. And I think we've talked when we were doing the light and shadow um, unit, we did talk about Rembrandt and his use of lights and darks, his chiaroscuro. He is the master. And we look at this, the way the light is hitting his face. Um, it's just beautiful. And it's just perfect composition. So there is someone to inspire you for sure. Next. Another one I've talked to you about is Artemisia Gentileschi, one of my absolute favorite artists from the Renaissance time. She was a very strong woman and went through a whole lot of horrid stuff, so you can look that up if you're so inclined. Um, her story is very compelling. Anyway, this is one that I've spent a lot of time with. This is her self-portrait of herself painting, and um, it's just a really great angle because it goes against, like, when we talked about composition, this is the one that I think I referred to. Um, the angle that her arm is reaching up on is the opposite angle because usually you would re read from left to right and this is going in the different direction so it's very dynamic and um, exciting for a portrait and very different for the time for sure she was ahead of her time next we have mary cassatt mary cassatt did very few actually that i could find i don't know she, anyway this is one of the only self-portraits i saw of her um I didn't really search extensively though, so if you want to, you can. She did a lot of portrait work though of mothers and children and um, they're beautiful to look at. So this is one she did of herself. And she worked a lot in pastel and she also worked in oil. Um, but she really got her whites are beautiful the way she does the whites in that dress. Notice the different lavenders and yellows. It's really a beautiful painting. Next, of course, Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van Gogh did oh, so many self-portraits. So look him up if you are interested in painting like him. We've talked about his texture before, but look, isn't that marvelous? It's just beautiful. There are certain sites that you can go on and really um, explode out, you know, blow up the, the painting and see it closer. Um, and just be able to see all of those um, layers of paint that he has and the brushwork. So that might be something you might want to think about painting your own self-portrait in the style of Van Gogh. Henri Matisse, another one that we've discussed before. Um, this is his self-portrait and I think it's just really a fun one too. Again, he's just got very um, more flattened shape, a lot of bold line work. It's um, something that's very doable. I think you guys could absolutely imitate his style and create your own. Notice the sink and the detail of the background, but still even that is somewhat flattened. And it's just all about the shapes to him and the negative space. Look at the red of the rug underneath of that negative space. It's just such a brilliant choice. And then it's echoed in his palette too. So it's a nice one. Oops. Oh, I went past the other one. I don't know if I can go back. I don't think I can. Maybe. No. Yeah, no, I can't go back. Sorry about that, guys. I just seem to uh, miss this one. Okay, here we go. Um, I am not a gamer now. There we go. All right. So this is Paula Munderson Becker, and she is a. Uh, she was um, a pioneer in modernism. So just really, really. Um, for a woman that was like very bold to be doing the things that she was doing. Again, she has some of those same um, flat areas of color, the heavier line work. This is herself holding a couple of flowers. And so it's kind of, it makes for an interesting composition too. And then the, on the long narrow format. So there's another choice you can make. I like how they just include like part of the 
one hand too. I mean, hands are tough, but it's a good challenge if you guys want to go for something like this. I really, really love this one. And now to Frida. Frida Kahlo, famous, very famous for her self-portraiture work. She spent a lot of time at home and in recovery mode. She was um, injured and she spent a whole lot of time in bed and did a lot of herself in that. So you could Google her and just see a zillion self-portraits um, that she created. And this was one that I just always thought was interesting. Cat and the monkey. And I don't know. Um, she uh, has a lot of surrealism going on and um, just trying to depict her pain and what she was going through. So that might be something you might want to try to emulate there. Frida's, Frida's great. All right, onward. This is Kathy Kulix. She is she was a an artist uh, from Germany. I think in the forties, thirties, forties. Anyway, um, I thought this was an interesting approach to the portrait too. Just again, she's showing hand, which is tough, but. I don't know. Maybe when I saw that, I was like, yeah, this is how I'm kind of feeling today. <laughs> so maybe that's why I was drawn to this one. But just showing that it can be um, your self-portrait. You know, if you don't want to paint it, you can draw it. And that, a lot of times that's a way to really um, spend more time exploring and getting to know your face. Yeah, and you have an eraser, too. <laughs> Different other tools. So if you want to draw, here's your permission right here. You can draw your self-portrait. Ah, uh, yes. The iconic Norman Rockwell self-portrait I love because he's got himself, a painting of himself, painting himself, looking into the mirror of himself. You know, it's just, just perfect. Um, it's just beautiful. So it's a fun one. Yeah, you can get creative with these self-portraits. You do whatever you want. I know this is a little bit much, but it's pretty fun. I remember doing one of myself once. It was uh, reflected in somebody's mirror glasses. So it was kind of a fun thing to try. Okay. And Andy Warhol. Oh, never been a big fan of his, but a lot of people like him. And, um, you know, it's covering this time period because as I'm going through time, we needed somebody 60s-ish. Um, he pop art, of course. And actually, this is something fun you can do. There's a lot of phone apps that you could take a picture of yourself and you can get this Andy Warhol effect and then take that and try painting from your phone too. I mean, I want you to paint, you know, from a mirror because I think that's a good practice too. Actually, it's like painting from life, but painting from a photo or from your phone sometimes helps you to really lock it in. So if you want to do it that way, it's a little bit easier, of course, um, but it's definitely flatter, but for this look, you know, flat work, that's what he was achieving, that and those bold colors and just reduced shapes. So um, definitely a way to play with this. That would be just fine with me, and I look forward to seeing if you end up going this route. Uh, one of my very favorites, because I know I talk about him a lot, David Hopney get the cover of his catalog thing but anyway this is he did a lot of self-portraits as well he just um that was his practice he did it from the time he was a young boy he would do a self-portrait at least one a year and it was interesting just to see him change over the years and um and his styles change but um not overly you know there was always like you could always tell it was a david hockney so Ah, uh, so yeah, to include a current artist, Chuck Close is probably the hot um, portrait artist out there right now. There's a, quite a few, and I'll be including some links to some other ones you can look at. But Chuck Close is the one that people go to and talk about quite a bit. His style is very interesting. Um, it's certainly different. And just showing that you th there's just unlimited ways that you can go with this project. Um, that is certainly an idea to try to emulate what he's doing. I don't know how I would do it, but if you're willing, I will help you and try to figure it out. All right. I think I actually, yeah, 
might even include a link. I think there is something where somebody shows how to paint like him or maybe he's demoing. Anyway, at the time I'm making this video, I don't have that yet, so we'll see. <laughs> I should have been more prepared. All right, um, we are going to move into my own because I just wanted to include a little bit of mine. This is with, um, both of these are with oil and cold wax. Um, the one on the left is um, a messy, uh, quick, I think it was a class demo that I spent about 10 minutes on, so, or 15 maybe. But yeah, it's, I can certainly see problems with it now, but at the time, it's like, eh, it worked. It was okay. I would definitely um, brighten up the chin and go darker underneath the chin. I don't know why I had it reversed, but I did. Anyway, not, not awful, not great. Very messy. It was just a very loose painting, which is definitely a way you can go. If you want to do a palette knife, loose painting of yourself, That's it's quick, it's easy as far as, you know, just spreading paint and trying to get your face shape. I think that was more than anything, get the face shape right, and the rest sort of falls in place. Um, the one on the right is just a fun one I did in my studio, but it's kind of goofy but fun. I just did one of myself painting in my studio just because I was going to be leaving the studio, so I needed a little memento. <laughs> and let's see, one more group of mine. So this... Uh, is me in silver point on the left and then a quick like just watercolor water pen I think I did um, last Halloween when I dressed up like Frida and then I just did a little 10 minute quick get a painting up on Facebook for my daily challenge so that's that's what that one the other the silver point is a little bit longer it's hard to really see it online it's one that you need to sort of see in person because it um, it glimmers because of the silver and so it's like layers and layers of, of silver on a piece of paper that's been treated. Anyway, um, those are mine. So then that's it for portraits. Um, hopefully you're inspired. You see it can be as just simple as the Frida one. It can um, certainly take on a whole lot more um, if you decide to go for that Chuck Close thing. So think about it, be inspired, go online and see some of the other portraits out there because there are so many and there's just, yeah, an unlimited amount of inspiration out there. And you guys are beautiful models, so embrace yourself and do this and have fun, relax and enjoy.